bond gain or losses. Broke this out separately because it kind of overlaps with the stocks, but it does have a few different nuances that you need to be aware of. Um, and that people don't trade bonds sometimes. Um, they only trade other things, securities, and so not everybody's interested in it. Let's start at the very basic. At their core, they work exactly the same as capital gains on stocks. They have tax lots, just like stocks do. We talked about what defines a tax lot in that module. The first in, first out sales rule or the FIFO sales rule applies, but you could also specifically identify a specific purchase when you sell a bond. Treasury bills are sold at a discount and do not pay interest. They don't have a coupon. And the price paid when you buy them is the, and the face value, the difference is interest. So when a treasury bill matures, there should be no gain or loss. It does appear on your 1099B as a transaction and does need to go on your Schedule D and your 8949 reporting for the IRS. Now, why is that? The IRS matches your proceeds and your cost basis to every tax return, and it's an automated process. If something doesn't match, they will issue you a notice and say, you didn't put this on your tax return, we want tax. So in order to avoid those kind of notices, you want to put this transaction, even though there's no gain or loss, on your tax return. So the interest is interest, the difference between the purchase price and the maturity. That's reported on your 1099 interest as interest. You're going to pick it up as interest income, and you should be good to go. We talked a little bit about corporate bonds and how they work. The calculation of the gain or loss is exactly the same as it is for stocks. The maturity of a bond, even though it doesn't seem like it's a sale, is a disposal. And again, for the same reason that you need to report that treasury bill, it needs to be reported again because it, again, will generate a notice from the IRS saying, uh-uh-uh, you didn't report this, you must owe us tax, pay us money. Nobody likes to get those notices. It causes panic and heart racing, so we want to avoid those. And sometimes the simplest things, just putting those zero things on your tax return, avoids those kind of notices. They're called a CP2000 notice. Municipal bonds. We always think of municipal bonds as being 100% tax Free. They are, but they aren't. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Municipal bond interest is federally tax exempt. Again, we talked earlier in the section about interest, how municipal bond interest from a state other than your residency state could be taxable in your residency state. But in general, let's talk about buying a municipal bond in the state you live in, your resident state. It would be federally tax-free, it would be state tax-free. Except if you sell it and you have a gain or loss. The gain or loss on the transaction is not tax-exempt, only the interest income. Gain or loss on municipal bonds is not a tax-exempt event. Again, they need to go on your Schedule D on your 1040, they need to go on your 89 49. So let's talk about the amortization of the pollen premium and discount and how this affects this. And if you want to tuck back in your mind when we talked about zero coupon bonds and OID back in the bond section on interest, this would work exactly the same way as OID does. If you have a premium or discount that when you buy your bond in the marketplace, it trades at one of those, it's amortized over the life of the bond meeting a, that premium or discount either subtracts from or adds to the interest income that you're receiving annually. That subtraction or addition adjusts the cost basis of your bond and is recognized when your bond either matures or is sold. That's different than a market fluctuation to create a gain or loss, 
theoretically, if it's a perfect world, and we all know it's not, or if you always hold a bond to maturity, any premium year discount you have at its maturity should make no gain or loss. The face value of the bond should be equal to the maturity value of the bond. Now, sometimes they'll call a bond early and pay you a premium for calling it early. Then you might have a gain or loss. So be aware of those little things. Those are things to think about as you have bonds presented to you. Bonds are subject to cost basis reporting now, so you should get this information if it's a recent purchase of a bond by recent the last three to five, four years in your 1099 reporting from your broker. However, if it's a bond you've held for some time, you won't get this information. Also, if it's a bond you've held for some time, the premium discount answer might be different because most taxpayers did not amortize this over the life of their bond early on in the past. It's been in the tax code forever, but nobody really paid any attention to it until just recently.